I'm going to buy a dog and limit it out every time with this guy. That's pretty good. All right. Well, yeah. There's a lot of people that are asking public employees. Connect with you to see where you go with. Okay. Very good. Very good.
but, it oh, there just needs oh, to be accepted. So I good. think that can be done during council, just <laughs> accepting the policy set forth. Right. Good. Yeah. Good. Whether or not he was fine with it. Um, so your 2022 appropriations um, tonight is just kind of a, a draft for you. Um, a few line items that may change is um, the employee insurance line items. We just actually met with um, Forker and our insurance ultra today. We had our renewal meeting this morning. So um, Mark is um, negotiating that. So we won't have those final figures to put in there. Though I have it, um, what I anticipated I actually already have um, built in here when I was doing these. I was anticipating a little bit of an increase. So we'll see how good he is and if he can yeah. get it down to that where I have it. So there may or may not be um, additional increase. Um, your first um, three pages are all the general fund. Just so you know, we have 354 line items that we, we mess with, <laughs> that we appropriate into. Um, the general fund on page three, it ends. Um, you'll see the 5,314,000. Um, when we first started our appropriations in 21, it was actually at 5,348,668. So it's down a little bit, which is a good thing. And hopefully we won't get close to spending all of that. Um, you have some municipal courts um, right below the general fund there, um, municipal court indigent expense, computer um, and special projects and his probation. Those are just funds that strictly pertain to municipal court. So the judge um, and his clerk, it's just based on what they revenue they bring in. And there again, the lodging um, tax bureau, that's the money you know, that the lodging tax comes into. Um, fire, um, it's up a little bit, um, 1,446,500 compared to 1,397,500. Obviously, um, I increased, well, their salaries went up, but um, I, the general fund portion of the fire salaries, I kept even where we did last year because they're getting a little bit more self-supporting to work. So I felt like they can afford to pay a little bit more. Um, we can take some more from there anything new with them, I did end up creating them an IT computer support line that they didn't have. So I thought we're getting so much into that they really need. Um, if I can back up on the general fund portion, I'm sorry, I'm trying to go quickly for you tonight. Um, the property code, I left it, you'll see on page two. <clears throat> General Admin's Property Code Investigator it has a blank there. That's where um, that position's salary used to be. Right. All I have done is taken that <laughs> salary and what the costs are going to be, and I shifted down to on page three, the 112. You'll see safety, security, law enforcement um, liaison. So that's where in the new contract, we have how that's all negotiated and that spreadsheet was attached there that's 70 dollars $70, so the goal is to take that position now out of that safety security law enforcement fund <coughs> rather than the general fund so where, where is it moved to um the 112 right here thank you yeah right there um <coughs> I wanted to point that out. The other that I left blank in the general fund is the um, community band art park. Um, I know last year, the community band, we had $2,500. They said they didn't need it. So I just left it blank and that line item is always there if they want to come back to you, either entity and speak to you about that. I knew Lanny had mentioned to me, I thought he was going to be here this evening, but maybe he's going to be at the regular council meeting. Um, the support was in there for our town at 10,000. Um, that's a, just maybe 10 lines down on page two. Um, 
So that's up to you guys. I think he wants to maybe see if there could be some additional funding there. <coughs> Sherry, I that. actually talked to him and he's not going to be here and he said at this moment that's fine. Okay. <coughs> Good. Um, so fire, like I said, back on to page three. Um, streets compared to last year. It's actually, I only have a $10,000 higher. So it's, they're in pretty good shape. Um, food sanitation, um, that's where we pay a portion of the sanitary fees that come in for the food license. So a little more than half of his salary he's is generated by his, the license that he administers and collects. Um, you see, we have the street um, levy funds. Um, they're estimated at $417,563. Capital improvement, that pretty much stayed the same. Fire capital improvement, they just requested $500,000 be um, appropriated. So down to water, um, it looks like it's about $800,000 less than last year. But the, the big part of that is we had um, West Lafayette capital improvement in there. That's where for the project money was running in and out. So we don't need that line item anymore. So that's why you'll see the um, difference there. And sewage, um, it's a little bit less this time too. David has it, it's basically 2.6 and it's 2,267 last time. Um, solid waste. Um, I increased that a little bit. Um, that's based off of um, just the trash um, contract and how much is actually coming in and so forth. And then um, we have the new fund, the water was up yet. That is actually the money that we received from them that um, is close to $800,000. So, um, and that money can only be spent in West Lafayette. But they, in the best interest of West Lafayette. In the best interest of West But he has only asked it $76,000 of it to be appropriated. Um, fire pension, that's the other portion that comes from um, property tax. Um, State patrol, that's for um, any tickets downstairs. Portion goes to the... Um, to our general fund and the other 50% goes to the state patrol transfer fund. And then that money in turn goes directly to the Shopping County Law Library. Mm -hmm. um, there again, um, bid bonding insurance. Um, I just kind of try to estimate that because we have our chemical bids that come in and out of there. If there would happen to be a house fire and insurance money comes in, the percentage that has to come here. Um, so that gets, you know, could fluctuate. Again, there's our insurance um, contracts, the incidentals and estimated claims. Um, I actually have it maybe a little higher than what they estimated um, today, but pretty close. And then the rest of it is just our JEDs and that's money that comes in and out. And then our new um, fiduciary fund um, or custodial fund, whichever way you wanna refer to it, the West Lafayette sewer contract and admin. And that's for the billing that they're doing to collect the sewer for West Lafayette. And then we keep a, what is the percentage? 6.75%. 6. 6. 6. I was gonna say six. Um, so that's that. Um, but if you wanna take a look at, you know, just take a look at it. And if you have any more detailed questions on it, let me know. And then um, for the next final, cause I'll still be going through these you know, here over the next couple of weeks, but if we can get this on the agenda um, for um, November 8th. November 8th, and then it can, or November, is it 8th or 9th? 8th. Oh, my God, I don't think. So then we can just let it take its course in three readings. And I mean, that's, that's fine. And then I can definitely buy the last one, make sure you have a good, clean copy and that I can just email you rather than, you know, giving you so many paper. But tonight I thought it was easier just to be able to glance down through it. Quite fast as I've gone through that. Wow. <laughs> we've met we've met on that. Yeah. I agree to agree with Karen. So. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, Mark and I got together last like week. And... Year, so. no. <laughs> we, we usually only meet well, in the past few years. We've only met once in December. I had it to pass on December 14th. Okay. So hopefully we Have can first and second down. readings. You know, if it's if it's take its course, yeah, yeah it should be fine. Okay. Even if there's not a quorum, if it's taking its course. Yeah. So on these jets that we have, uh -huh. I guess I'm still trying to understand the full effect of these jets. That's that's money we spend, and we have money coming in and going out yeah. on the last page. Yeah. Um, like what to upkeep? What I mean, what what do we spend our what are we spending our money on? And so this these jets, what that is, it's with you know we have the agreements, and um, the money comes into income tax. It drops right off, and then it gets into these you know the nine twenty fund and nine thirty funds. And then quarterly, it gets split. The township gets their um, percentage. The Port Authority gets their percentage, the general fund, and then their, their new project fund. So the money basically comes in and goes right back out. Goes to the Port Authority, the township, and then to the city. Now, the city, where it says general fund, it's kind of a little deceiving because the safety, security, and law enforcement still gets their portion right off the top. In the fire fund, they get their portion right off the top. It's, um, I don't have that in front of me. I think I can remember. Out of the 2%, we get 0.46%. The fire gets their half a percent. Right. Safety, security one, gets that. One and of that remaining, we get 0.46 of that remaining 1%. And that just goes into our general fund. Yeah, so 1.46%. The city overall gets out of that too. So what's the what would our total number be as far as once everything comes in and everything is dispersed? How much do we profit from that Jed? Without me having to try to do the math. Um, <laughs> You want to master. There were, no, there were, not. you know, Roger, I don't have those JED reports. I passed those out last time for Danelle. It's it's on those JED reports. And okay, I I'll just, take a look again. Um, and how much of that? And goes, I didn't bring my budget file with me. That's all right. How much do we give the Port Authority in total? You know, I see about 39000 right now, the JED. Well, oh, so for the JED, and then and, and the water, the sewer admin supports, um, Twenty thousand. Sure the water 5, gets twenty thousand, and the general fund gives fifteen. So fifty-five thousand is what we support. Their other funding comes from the jet. Thank you. What falls under the unclaimed funds? Sure. The unclaimed funds, that's um, could be anything from municipal court. Um, mostly it's outstanding checks that haven't been cashed and then have to go in and go into the unclaimed funds. And then um, municipal court, they'll have the same thing. They have checks that they have to issue for witness fees, jury fees. There's probably a gazillion $15 unclaimed funds checks. And then they have to set, they set there for five years. Hmm. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah, feel free to reach out if you, if you do. And then the sheriff contract, you know, I increased it accordingly. The general fund portion, that very top number, 560. And then if you go to the very first line item in the 112 on page three, you'll see safe security law enforcement sheriff 1,615. Those will equal what your current next year's contract will be. Okay. So in this, this is just what we're spending our money on. This is not money that's probably maybe owed, like shut off water and stuff this, like that. This is where the budget is going. Appropriations permission to spend. This is what council gotcha. will grant permission to spend. I know. <laughs> Anybody else? Especially when it gets towards the end of the year, and I'm like, oh my gosh. 
Anyone? Okay. Okay. Ordinance committee. I know last week. Um, I know. Does anybody have anything? Do we have the ordinance or the um, utilities ordinance on the agenda tonight? Uh, anybody have any questions? So let's get ready to go on for the first reading. Is it necessary to get all three readings tonight? No. 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 I like we said in the last couple of meetings, we'd like it to yeah. run its course. Yeah. I'd like to run its course. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Like that's what we said last year. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> so it'll be passed by the Sunday show. Right. Uh, lot sizes. Max, you have anything? I, I do have. For like one I knew you would. Um, Yes, it's six. I'm like six. Yeah. <laughs> so what I done, I, I just uh, what brought this all about is we've been tearing these houses down, and those lots don't conform to anything mm -hmm. in our current zoning. So these are just basically the R one and R two language. I got take, one for Tom so as well. And uh, I think we said. Mr. President, we'd like Bobby to meet with us on this as well. So I'd like to give this guy to you guys tonight to study it. So uh, I'm not going to take the test. The You're right. <laughs> we decide uh, to get, get together yet this week or wait till next week. Let's yeah. wait till Tom gets back. So uh, yeah, things I was looking at today, even like R1s have 10,000 square feet, but the way R2s is written, where you can have apartment houses. It has to have 6,000 square feet. So right. it really don't make sense. I did look at just pulled some average lot sizes down in, well, first ward, I guess, for lack of a better term. A lot of those are like 3,000 square feet. Pulled uh, the mayor's house is like 2,500 square feet. So, well, it's right, right now. That property's not worth anything to anybody if the house burns down. Yeah, it's demoed. What do you do with that lot? So I apologize for not being up the table, but I got some wrong titles going on. Like I I said, that, so. Probably you and Mark an article out of the Zanesville papers. Zanesville City Council is going through the same thing yeah, right now. Be, so. so can you, I mean, do you mind sharing with them what we talked about about the existing? Do you want to wait on that? Or? I, I, just, I just don't wait on that. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. But uh, whatever you guys want to do as far as meeting, I don't know, is Tom out all week on vacation? So. He'll be back what, Monday? Probably he'll be back Sunday. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get with uh, Bob's schedule and see what we can do next week. I'd like, kind of like to meet before our next council meeting so we can bring something back for that as well. So. Yeah. I think what you'll find out, right, is that uh, there's some of that just doesn't fit what we have, what we currently have. For it. And it needs amended. So a lot of that. And I know it's something we talked about probably what six or eight months ago. And we put yeah, all on it. It just needs, yeah, it just needs from start <laughs> to finish everything all at once. Just Looks like they were originally written in 1962, which is I'm guessing <laughs> when they kind of started with yeah. the student edition of uh, lots up by the high school, you know, Sleepy Hollow Drive, uh, Pearson edition. All those were people was building bigger houses at that time. Everybody was going with ranch style homes versus the two stories. And this is something we need to relook at because we don't want to mow. I don't want to get up to where we're mowing 25 lots around town that we demolish buildings in the next five years. And Our goal is to we we can sell those. Correct. People. That's yeah. what we want to do. Have you talked to the service director at all in Zanesville? See what I, they're looking at. I have not got him called yet, but I know Chip for it. Let's see what they're talking about and what they're thinking about doing. Yeah. I think they were a step ahead of us. Not they much. We might be able to steal some ideas. Then the other one we discussed was campers. We really don't have a written legislation. There, all our stuff refers back to trail uh, reports. Uh, so. That same committee, while we're talking about this, wants to talk about uh, campers that are not being utilized. We're just, we're, you know, basically, what we're talking about is old campers with people 
are living in the dark space we live in and that how do we rectify that situation so things we talked about as you can see that only means all anybody's any council members uh intelligence we talked about having them covered um side yard versus backyard and what kind of a, and help me out if i missed something and i think we agreed that you know somebody said something about a concrete slab but we said no as long as it was i think it was on there um for the surface and what are we considering street parking you know if it's in the side yard and there's a street going right there i think those are some things that i think Mark how long and Max and I, and how long is it going to sit there? Right. Yeah. But obviously, the goal is is that I know the mayor and Max. You know, it, what we want to do is we want to prevent people from living in those mm -hmm. uh, activities that are unwanted in a neighborhood. You know, we we want to nip that if we can. I always see a lot of them in the out. It drives the alleys. Yeah. The ceiling, and then they you see an electrical cord hooked up. Right. That gives you pause. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. one that we're actually working on. Right. Street. Well, yeah. there's there's several right on that. And within that same intersection, we've got the one on the empty lot on North 12th, and we've got 12th and Chestnut Street. Right. So we Two are in that lot. But we are sure. proceeding along with those. Uh, so Jeff, have you given any more thought to this since you're the property code investor? Well, you know, just like we talked, it just you know, you need to kind of figure a reasonable time frame if someone has one that they're going to go camping next next weekend. They need to have it plugged in for you know for a few days to get let the ice box get cold, maybe just run water if they're cleaning in there. But you know, I think you know, seven days is plenty, you know, to do that or four days or whatever you think. But we just now we have them that they're all over town that their own dilapidated <clears throat> campers that nobody's going to pull anywhere. They don't have license on them. So they're not operable. The tires are flat. Those shouldn't be connected to water. So, you know, the vehicle needs to be movable. It needs to have registration on it. It, you know, and nothing connected to it. Even if it's not livable or they're not using it, we still want those removed from property or we just don't want them plugged in or hooked well, up. Well, I mean, because... you know, they don't they don't fit in our junk ordinance. Okay. So if you want to take it that step to tell people they got to get rid of them, you know, I think where our ordinance stands right now for like automobiles, if it's not licensed, it's not operable, it's got to go. And I think the right. same should so be I, the I know, I mean, I think we've had like one on Spring Street for over 20 something yeah, years. Yeah, right. Yes. So, you know, that's, that's, you know, I, I don't know how far you want to take it, but we need to make a step in time or whatever, but I think, you know, it's time now to move on because I think it's a homeless you, situation, we got people that are living in. I like parts of 1193.02. I don't know where you found that one. I don't know what city it come out of, but it's probably about the third one in this. Yeah, uh, some of those came from the West of it. I think the first think, one was too inclusive of this one. If you look at our ordinance, our problem is it says trailers. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. right. It, it, need, it needs to be campers and recreational vehicles. Now, we're not trying to punish the people who are going camping. We're trying to, to get rid of the campers that are just sitting and not going anywhere and that are an eyesore. Absolutely. So, you know, yeah. that's what, and with everything else, we try to work with people. So uh, sometimes we work with impossible people, but that makes the job fun. That's the way she goes. Right. What makes the world go around. I think if we were, if we're working on those three, and maybe once we get the uh, utilities ordinance in motion tonight, uh, maybe if we can, maybe if we just maybe keep working on three, Livable ordinances that you know we can amend if they need amended. Um, that's that, are you guys in agreement with that? Just mm -hmm. keeping yeah. three that we need to amend. What's right? that surface under campers? What well, well define that a little I bit. I think in, in uh, some of the examples that um Jeff sent out was like the surface under the camper had to be like concrete or blacktop or something but, but mark and i and max we talked about it and we said no you know we, we well, okay. go that say that's kind of a... 
Yeah, it'd be pretty kind of difficult for people pulling their campers up Absolutely. in there. Yeah, you know, once okay. we start talking about it, you know, yeah, it's just some hard. of the things that we had down. So, mm -hmm. but I think one of the main things was it would help, you know, the police and Jeff is if there wasn't a cover <coughs> on one. Right. If there's a cover, the, the major thing is if they're covered, it's hard to get in there and mm -hmm. strap it down. When you're inside, it's hard to strap down a cover from when you're in the camper. So that's mm -hmm. to us, that's the biggest indicator that no one is living in that camper. Oh, sure. So yeah. that's kind of our, our main goal. Anybody else? Good. So, <clears throat> Mayor, when you and Max and I meet on Monday, we maybe have another one ready. We can look around. Good. I'm sure we. I'm sure we can find <laughs> some. I know we can. <laughs> you, you were last meeting. We talked about the uh, farm animals. Is that oh. something that you wanted to try to do something with? We just enforce the one we have. Well, I mean, enforce what we have. There's, there's, it's in two different places. And so, you know, you've got one that says five acres, and you've got ones for chickens that say as long as they can be 50 feet from the house or 50 feet from the lot line, they can have chickens. So, you know, so I guess you want to revise the question, the, the yeah. question that were raised, they didn't, some, some didn't want any chickens in town. Well, you know, we're going to have to fix something to make it so that can't happen. I don't care. You three can get together. And figure out what's most important, what's most pressing for our city, and then we can attack it. I spoke to a gentleman last Saturday, uh, first ward. Uh, he doesn't mind the chickens being there, but he has two two different uh, uh, homes near his where the roosters are waking him in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. it, can we put a noise con uh, statement in the ordinance? We already have a noise ordinance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that's never enforced. And, and the problem for that <laughs> is, is that that's on the burden of him to take a recording of that to show mm -hmm. that it's a, a problem, the video recording. Am I right, Bob? Is that a timestamp? <laughs> I don't want to try to be enforcing a booster is too loud or <laughs> yeah. throwing them too late at night. We either just need to let it be here or get rid of it. Decimals on that, Bob. Yeah. Real right. world problems. Yeah. Yeah. I, if we're not going to allow horses, I don't think we should allow chickens either. That's just mm -hmm. my opinion. Yeah. Well, I was thinking in the immediate sense, the ordinance specified chicken is rooster technically not on the ordinance to be allowed, but is there a foul? Oh, okay. So that's that's what I'm <laughs> so um, I find that noise soothing. I will um after we meet on Monday, I'll let you guys know what we're going to uh, <clears throat> what we're going to cover before we get <coughs> bigger bigger here tonight. Um I know that um we have infrastructure, Glenn. I know that you said that um, where are we at? Are we just waiting on our funding before we do our drains and our you know, the things that we had talked about, or you know, where are we at on that, Max? We just going to wait and talk about it later on in the year, possibly in the first part of next year, is what uh, Kelly and Lynn and I talked about. Okay. See where we're at on mm -hmm. that. We just find out where we want to be. Mm -hmm. Dave, Dave does want to address the uh, water bells. Um, in the email I sent to council earlier today, you'll see an attachment called and this ties right into vows. It's, it's something from EPA called asset management. Now, a lot of times you hear asset essentials, two different programs. Asset essentials is our maintenance management program. Asset management is a program required by OEPA. And one of the things that's been said, they talked about is vows is one of their high priorities for isolation. Uh, work, distribution is working on getting caught up in the backlog. That'll be the major program we address in 2022 is get our valve exercising program in place. The numbers I've been given is we have 11 to 1200 valves in the city. Um, there's probably between us and West Lafayette, there's probably another 200 there that all need to be annually, excuse me, all valves need to be exercised at least once every five years. Do we know where they are? Some, 
Some are paved over. How many? How many work, Dave? Uh, some. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, and we know the ones that work. We go out and start exercising based on the data. Everybody's saying twenty to thirty percent of those will fail. That'll need to be replaced, repacked, steep strut up. So it, it's a big deal. That's part of the rationale when you look at the rate studies, the things you're saying with asset management coming down the road, funding to cover those future costs. You know, that's part of the driver for that. That's just one of the many elements of the program from asset management is valves, backflow inspections, you know, keep the plants upgraded. So sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. But you know, you want to talk about the valves and this if that's a very important issue i suppose that's why you're talking about this. right so on this utilities ordinance what do you have budgeted to keep the valves or well, if you feel in the modified if you have the appropriations or some capital invested um this year we spent most of the capital on booster station upgrades most of funding next year we'll go to valves and finish the booster station upgrades so i guess i'm asking so when this money starts coming in it goes through I mean, are you going to specifically say we need so much money set aside for these valves? Until we get through it the first time, it's hard to I mean, answer your question, Tom, how much we need if it's such an unknown. Is some of them are, we have drawing that says there's a valve here, there's a bunch of the asphalt. It may take us a day or two to find that one valve. Right. And when we look at the funding coming from the CARES Act funding, it's, I think, Mary, when we talk about three, four hundred thousand. Maybe out of that, that's maybe 40 valves. So we're trying to identify the critical valves that isolate the system. Right. I got a price in one valve for the water plant. It's one valve, it's $52,000. So Dave. when you're talking about funding, are you talking about the American Rescue Plan funds? That, and you know, with our ordinance going through, we're talking about a rate increase, is that correct? Well, yeah. this one this year strictly has no rate increase. Okay. Yeah, this okay. is not, we haven't. Address those is just, you know, the okay. utility building or is just red, 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 fundamental red, building red, changes. Red. It has nothing to do with the rate increase. And the, and the rescue plan money, we're just going to start or see I mean, where we, we're at. We have it, and it's kind of, yeah, where we have identified some critical valves over the race. Oh, there's we, no doubt. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, we will definitely put some money into valves from. From the rescue, we have several different options that Dave Ice talks about. Is if you notice when we had the summer breaks on Kenilworth and 16th right. earlier, it was in the summer, we put uh, these uh, very nice uh, sort of valves in for your hot tap the lines, and they put the best ones in that would last for a long time. And if we can designate loops around the city, I mean, we would put 20 to 40 valves in there, what, 80. 500 a piece. Yeah, the eight inch files, two eight inch files, we had about eighteen thousand dollars in. Depends what size line on just like if we could get where we could isolate different parts of the city, yeah. the majority of people in the water would have something like that. Um, what I've asked the uh <clears throat> water superintendent and his maintenance guy, you know, Foster and, and Josh <clears throat> is to look at, especially for the water plant side, look at our past disasters. What failed, what didn't we have? You know, for example, that's where this. 24 inch valve coming. We couldn't isolate the plant from Harsh Gravel or Reservoir. So we're approaching that. Where's our critical points of failure? So they're, they're working on that. Okay. Now, and the valve thing is a very important key because you don't want to get the phone call that you had to call the hospital to tell them to fill their tank up because we could possibly be out of water. Right. And I've gotten that call a couple of times, and that's not a very comfortable call when. We, could we run actually the whole went city out of the water. Two months ago, I had to make that call. We had a big break across McDonald's. All our drawings said it should have been valve here. There was no valve there. That's what is. Is there any plans to update the maps? Yes. The maps that actually tell us instead of calling Mark's dad or Don Dar and say, "Hey, do you remember back in 1920 yeah. where the valves were?" Right. What we're looking at, because most of the valves, I'll use an example, what's off yet? I got a grant, got those GPS. <coughs> okay, so that's where we need to get to long term. Exactly. Yeah, when's the, so what's the map? I'm very familiar with the valve map because I've had to stare at it for, right. um, was that 90 somewhere? Yeah. 90s, 90s. I think, yeah, I think by that, 
Yeah, from it was the arcade. Yeah, it was nine. So we're trying to get the, actually the CAD version of those. So we right. start updating that. <clears throat> right. So yeah. at, at this point, we could start anywhere. Is is where we're at. But right. you know, the approach we're taking to answer your question is look at the critical points of failure that we've had in the past. We know and see what it takes to isolate those points going forward. Right. That's mm -hmm. what I. Yeah, and that's the right. plan we're taking right now. Because when we have a water break, you should be able to go out, take a key, turn the valve, fix the water right. break, be mm -hmm. done. Uh, kennel work in 16 mm -hmm. blew the road out. I mean, when you have water and you can't get it shut off. Well, that's why maybe just a, a new study on where our shutoffs are, our valves would right. be right. step right. one. Right. right, right. And I'll use the last water break, your example, Merritt, the one at the University of Cambridge Road. If the one valve, because I asked, well, why didn't we shut that one? Oh, it's broke. New knowledge to me. If we had that fixed, we probably wouldn't have had a boil alert. Max and those guys wouldn't have lost water. Right. So, I mean, it's 2021. I just hope that we, well, we know something's up. broken. We should have fixed it. Right. right. That's no, the that's, same. I mean, that's, 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 that's the strategy we're getting into, right. Roger. If it's broke, we need to go and right. get it and fixed. And we need to fix it and fix it. Right. 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 That's what I we know. It's that's what I'm hoping we do. Right, yeah, no, and right, and, and find out where these valves are. Right. You know, with the money that we're getting, it, it seems a million dollars. Not oh, that much. Like a million dollars could. I mean, we could spend it in a day. I mean, it's not that. Yeah. That we're spending money that way. We're just there's so much that for some reason over the years, it's you get them to the point where we don't have money to fix it so it just fell by the wayside now it's an emergency because it was just never upgraded mm -hmm. again and there was no money there for infrastructure so strategically we have to be smart about what where we're going to put that money because we may not see another million dollars that they say hey fix stuff you haven't fixed for 50 mm -hmm. years so that's where we have to be really strategic on where we're we're putting that money and i think where there has a good example we did the hb 168 that five billion we looked at hearts gravel hill you know the one drawing said 1915 you know it's 100 plus years old and that's where asset management which is a required program from epa you know it'll take us you know several years to get there but it's saying as a group we're gonna have to figure out what those critical assets are and then adjust the rates enough to fund those at the end of their useful life. That's mm -hmm. the challenge. Yeah, great. I appreciate all you do. Mm -hmm. You obviously take pride in your job. I appreciate that. Tom, well, while he's up there, you want to go ahead and give an update on 8th and 9th Street and 20th Street? Sure, yeah, that often. Um, 20th Street will take that. Um, I would expect by the end of the week, the contractor should be done to the point where he's testing a line, <clears throat> excuse me, to bring the new services on. That'll leave the paving of that project. Uh, the engineer has recommended to the county commission as this contractor, Dirk Dahl, to pick for the uh, 8th and 9th Street water line. I don't know, did they vote on that at their Wednesday meeting, Max? I haven't heard anything back from them. Well, since they come back, there's no reason that, no. that would go through. And they actually come in with, what, 20, about $20,000 on their engineer. The latest revised yeah. estimate, yes. So. Uh, that's in the hands of the county commissioners. They'll have to award that contract, but our engineers recommended there's no reason not to pick the low qualified bidder. And they did do that's who done the Hillsdale Drive right. project a couple of years ago. Yeah. Had, I've talked to some of the, the employees and said they did a very good job. I mean, they so they've got good references. So there was eight, nine, that one. Uh, also, in the council packet was a copy of the presentation given, <clears throat> excuse me, to Warsaw Council. They were very receptive, uh, they seemed to be pleased. You know that we're proceeding with that but it was also stressed a lot that that project will have support itself that the residents of shock and will not subsidize that project to them and uh, that's where we said grant funding for that is critical because i believe we don't get the five million that's going to be a tough road for them to haul in terms of debt reduction right. they asked why there was no debt reduction on west lafayette it comes back to the money that Sherry alluded to that they transferred from their capital fund. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I think what Warsaw's capital fund is what's $10,000 max, something like that. 13 is what was in Ron's <laughs> report today that we'll be going after funding. Yeah, so that's a major difference right there. Good. Um, just one more quick, you said eighth and ninth, is ninth back in that loop in that? Yeah. Okay. Yes, because um, Mike, 
Um, they'll start kind of like at Locust and 8th, I get my streets, Grand View, North View, back around, and that's Oak where it stops. Yeah, okay, it's going to stop us. Okay, ninth is back in because ninth was out. For, okay, right. Gotcha. But, you know, that's kind of the loop they're going to take. They're going to pick up the two, like Grand View and North View, mm -hmm. come back around and make the other tie at Oak right there. That's the new the original project. Right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. more, two more streets down. Now we only have uh, 18 yeah. more to go. So, I think Chad told me we have like 65 miles of pipe in the city. Right. So put that perspective. So okay. that's about 5,000 feet, 4,000 feet of pipe out of 65,000. Yeah. 65 miles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Thanks again. Um, Port Authority, some more quick update. Yes, um, I've got to condense about an hour and a half meeting in a couple of minutes. Um, I met with Tiffany last Friday, and as we all have been told and know from past discussions, a lot of it is confidential. So, uh, speaking in generalities, uh, just continue to work with MFM on the new project down there and a potential other uh, project with them. There's um, four or three out-of-town businesses who are wanting to relocate here, either within a new building or a renovated building. Um, we discussed several options and uh, insisted that any business locating here, we would like to be within the city limits, period. Um, so... I was loud and clear. She, she's supposed to um, stay in contact with those people and keep trying to work on finding a location for them. There's a couple of existing businesses that want to expand their operations um, and stay within the town. <clears throat> I know one of them is looking to move their business to the downtown area, but right now there's not a suitable uh, building for that. So she's continuing to work with them. And I've also talked to them quite a bit about that. Um, get out, out the highway, you can see where the Genesis property is making a lot of progress. Talk about some of the uh, road work that's gonna be done there. Continuing the uh, remediation of the steel ceiling site. Skip the property. That's a county property. It's going to be turned into a green space. Um, one of our longest discussions was on the Selby building. I know some of you in here have been involved in discussions about that building. Some of you might be leaning towards demoing that building. Um, I guess I would rather go the other way if there's a suitable buyer. I think we need to be patient and wait on that buyer. And if there is a buyer, um, there's discussion about needing to apply for demo monies right now, in case they have to demo it. Um, I just wanna make sure that people's minds aren't made up that they want to demo that building in spite of what the architectural studies have shown. And in spite of the fact that there may be, uh, is interest in someone buying that property. Um, made the point that we don't need another green space downtown. I don't think we need another art park. Um, so if, if there is a buyer that can renovate that building, then I think that's best for all of us. Mm -hmm. and I, I'm not going to, I'm not trying to interrupt, but I, Lanny is actually, uh, there are some interested parties, uh, and I'm kind of on that camp of, I don't want to hold. And, uh, <coughs> By chance, if someone wanted to develop that, then bring us a plan. If there were, you know, if that if something happened to that building, uh, a workable plan on um, so going to rebuild instead of a hole. Mm -hmm. Right, I agree. So Lanny's working uh, with some organizations. Sometimes, now, so. and I'm I'm not involved at all in the land bank. None of us are. A couple of you are. Um, I, I, sometimes I get the feeling we're outnumbered. Um, and if the majority of that group is leaning toward demo, I don't think it's a good decision for the city at this point. 
I think we need to be patient. Well, the and and the update on that, the land bank's plan uh, is to turn that property over to our town shop, and so if all all the stars align and and things happen the way they need to, uh, in the not in, in the in the near future, uh, we should our town should take ownership of that building. So if if everything goes accordingly. Uh, I think that's what we're going to see happen. I hope so. Um, talked a little bit about the um, four lane from Columbus to Pittsburgh, that corridor. She seemed to think the meeting that they had with the state representatives went well, and that's still uh, a possibility. It's moved from the back burner to at least the middle burner. Uh, I think that would be a very big asset for Kishat and. And the other thing that we um, beat around for a while is the purchase of the theater building, what, what the potential is there, but I want to make sure that the theater part of it is completed. Um, and I've been told, you know, Tiffany told me several times that that is in the plans. Um, I think that's probably one of the most important projects downtown, if we can get that theater open. You, know, you look at what the Midland Theater has done for downtown Newark, and that would be a, just a tremendous asset to downtown. So I think that would be near the top of anything we do downtown. And we're going to meet again. <coughs> uh, we're going to meet Friday after their monthly meeting. So hopefully have more information next time. Yeah. Anybody else? Roger. Okay. Talked to Michelle today. She said she had a little update for us on the um, bicycle path. Yeah, um, Mark and I met with Kevin from Omega last week just to really get on the same page and see where we are and what was completed. Um, he talked a lot about different venues or avenues for funding, but really where we're at right now is he is going to reach out to the Ohio Rail Commission and see if we can work out a land deal as far as uh, owning them owning the one railroad that we would like to have versus them leasing the other railroad that they use. So um, I think I was saying that right, Mark, we really just want to know, is this a feasible option? And are they going to work with us or are they not going to work with us? So um, we'll give them a few dates to, to try to get a meeting, another meeting together. So, um, so we'll know more soon as far as whether or not we're going to be able to move forward and, and make it happen. Right there. In the meeting, I just stated that there's really no sense in going any further if we can't acquire the property. So mm -hmm. that's the first step, and then we can right. talk about everything else. So mm -hmm. that's kind of where we're at is is how does that happen? So it's just a natural area, right there. Yeah, it's and nice. It's a good use. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, yeah. yeah. I, I think yeah. we have a lot. We'll have a lot of public support behind us. I know I've talked to a lot of people that are excited about it. So. Um, uh, Jeff, I know Kaylee asked, is, is there any way we can get that spreadsheet? We asked in June on your, on your reports, other than the paragraph things that you uh, send out. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it doesn't change a whole lot, but I can add, it, add what I've done. Sure. Yeah, I, I just, you know, as, as I think Kaylee stated, and I, myself, I mean, when people bring those things up, we can at least have, we have something to refer to. Sure. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, hey, this was done mm -hmm. on this date. Yeah, we're good. Because yeah. so. I actually just had a call last night about a property, and I was like, okay, I know Jeff and I have talked about this. I know he's made contact, but I don't know where we stand or where you know. And so I don't know. Um, on Highland. Oh, for the backyard? Yeah. Yes. Uh, last I knew, they were still working on it. And as long as they were making progress, the car chassis, the car chassis is back one. in the driveway. What oh, is? Yeah, I got yeah, a text I'm today. I got, I got a text today. Okay. It's back in the driveway. I'm yeah. sorry. So, and I think, and I don't, again, because <laughs> how far mm -hmm. we want to take this, mm -hmm. but I was told mm -hmm. by one of the neighbors that someone is living in the shed as well. On the island? Yes. Wow. A family member is living in the right. shed. Well, never know. Well, right. I told him not to tell anyone. Was <laughs> <laughs> she came to my house. <laughs> um, 
Mike, uh, on the rules committee, uh, Mark, when um, I, I come and talk to you about when we first started to work on this, you know, when you look at the, like, should we be parking meters in the in that description? I know uh, at our last meeting you said possibly. Yeah. Where do you where do you, where do you stand on that? Because if we're not going to have parking meters, then that needs to be out of that. I I don't I've not had anyone say like parking meters would be a great idea. No. Uh, but on the other hand, I wouldn't get calls from businesses saying that people are going to work at this location and parking in front of their business. And then when I ask them, "You want parking meters?" and they say, "No." Uh, I don't know what, you know, we don't have just an extra person to, you know, downtown to appease business owners in the past, we put 30 minute, 15 minute parking signs up that look cheesy right. and they should, we should have just told the people like it's, it's public parking. Uh, so the only way I see to make it fair for everyone is to put parking meters, but I'm not going at this time. We're not going to do that. Uh, you know, if, if someone works at a business, uh, the other businesses would appreciate if you parked in a public right. lot or behind Main Street. Uh, it's kind of it's comical to me because one issue leads to another, you know. I mean, and I think in the next five to 10 years downtown, you're going to be fighting for a parking spot. So it's kind of it's fun great. to me to watch. Yeah. You know, we had there's nothing downtown. Now it's now these there's people everywhere and there's no parking spots. So right. I don't know the solution. We will not place 15 or 30 minute parking signs to appease anyone. Uh, if we put anything in the ground, it will be parking meters, but it's not going to happen at any. Point. I just get I just get some of that language cleaned up in our yeah. rules committee. If I mean, if we don't have them. Yeah, I don't. I don't see any reason for for parking meters to be. Okay. All right. A quick question in regards to parking: Is the Hickory and May Street is that a public parking place now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, and if anyone wants to park there, they may. Uh, I said last meeting you weren't mm -hmm. here. I, uh, I would like to put that lot out for bid and just get rid of it. So uh, I know there is a lot. It, I spoke the other, last week at leadership and, and just talking about downtown and the things that are going on downtown. Uh, seeing it behind the scenes, there's a lot of action going on downtown. So I think now's mm -hmm. the time to, to unload that lot. Unless someone wants it for something, I don't see any use for it at all. It's the lot behind People's? It'd be next to the glass, glass house. The glass house. Oh, too, okay. Right there okay. on Hickory and uh, Hickory and Maine. Yes. Hickory and Maine. Okay. So if someone, I don't, if you guys all agree, I'll put it out for bed. Sure. I mean, you know, why not in person? Yeah. So, <laughs> so I at least want to get what we have in and out of it. I, like I said, I know there's uh, going to probably be some action at the at the old railroad restaurant uh it's just breakneck speed if you want to get yeah. something downtown mm -hmm. you better hurry so and put our portable toilet on that hickory street lot mm -hmm. that's i i talked to max mm -hmm. about that and like for some reason it's too far to walk like a block to that like everyone wants the, the lot on uh the Fourth Street. Yeah, the like yeah, yeah, we can't get. And that's right. yeah, I, we can, but we own a lot. So, you know, I mm -hmm. I don't know. We kind of toss that around. But that's yeah. that was my my mm -hmm. yeah, we're spot here. where we have a lot. So mm -hmm. put it on that lot. So people have to feel bad enough to walk up there and go. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where I'm at. Because you do like cheap, but that would not be a bad lot for that. Mm -hmm. Right. Even if you split, you know, you tap a lot for parking, half a lot for the, the yeah. portal. Mm -hmm. Because I'm idea. sure your water and sewer is probably back in that back alley. So somewhere, yeah. It makes sense. That's one of the shuttles out. It could be a good yeah. spot for it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Probably not. Yeah, right. <laughs> You're on a roll, Mayor. Go ahead and go. Okay. You got the report for us? Yeah, yeah. quick quick question. Yeah. Oh, uh, related to this conversation, what's the status of the uh, Chinese restaurant downtown? It's going to be demolished. Do we have a timetable? Uh, by the end of the year, I would say. Yeah. Would say Thank it's, you. It's yeah. been purchased by CBHC. Mm -hmm. So they bought that and they bought the little white house on the corner. So mm -hmm. all the way to the house. Yeah. That whole, oh. all the way to the house. Yeah. They spent in contact with me. Glenn, so soon. It's, I would, I know they've been in there. Uh, Taking things out mm -hmm. and then not in a while. They they stripped it right. pretty good, but they yeah. haven't been back in a while. So it should be should be close. Uh some road repair, skyline heights. We have full depth to repair, Spitler Hill. Uh, we have full depth to repair up there. Drainage uh, at Oak and North 10th Street. <clears throat> we're gonna work on uh, public works are working on all of those. Uh, we have some, I looked at uh, some cemetery lot charge changes and that will not have to be passed by ordinance max can raise those but we will keep you in the loop with uh what's going on there as uh dave kadrag told you warsaw water line the preliminary engineering got sent to us today it's, it's 88 pages so if you need something to read it has all the pictures all it has six different scenarios on it yeah, I did. Have you said that to him? I sent him just the presentation we gave to Warsaw. It was six pages. No, right. No, the one that we got from Engineering Associates. I'll forward that. 88, 88 pages. 88 pages. So, like um, it was, well, yeah, like all your public sources and everything. It's going to dry right. It has forward. all the maps. So it has extensive project breakdown and replacement. Uh, Dora, I just want to mention we're, we're, uh, crossing our T's and dotting our I's. We were gonna work on DORA this evening, legislation, but we need to follow the, the process and advertise a public hearing two weeks in a row. Uh, we had meeting, we had two meetings back in May, mm -hmm. but we only advertised it once. So we're not going to to get this thrown out on a technicality. So we're going to basically restart the process so we completely and accurately get it done. So, so what, what's the drop dead date? It'd be nice to get this thing done before the end of the year. Well, it's a winter now, so who's, and, well, it still doesn't know, matter. It'd be something we don't have to worry about mm -hmm. right. come spring. No, I, 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 get agree. Get that out uh, I think we have a we have a 60 day window and we need to have uh, another public hearing. We need to advertise it. Uh, I think with Cherry being out, just the loop of us trying to piece things together, it just got lost. So is this something that we will enact in our December meeting as the <coughs> target date? So yeah, we can, yeah this we can, yeah. That way everybody yeah. knows that's we're yeah. going to finalize this. We've been beating it around for nine months or whatever. Yeah. So are we having a public hearing tonight? No. Okay, because no. it was on the... Right. Okay. So uh, no. Just over in, in writing the ordinance, uh, we found that mm -hmm. there were things that didn't add up okay. that we had done. So instead of mm -hmm. uh, doing something improperly mm -hmm. and then getting it sent back and not being complete, we're going to complete it properly and cover cover all of our bases. Mayor, so we can start the time running. Are we presenting that application again tonight to city council? So that would be our date that- Yes, they, yes, we can. They can't have a hearing yes. before 30 days. So that right. would start the time. Yes. Consider yes. this to be your, we're submitting the application again to city council. Right. And we, we should have no issues on giving this to the state by the end of the year. That's all I have. If you guys have some questions, I'll answer any any questions you have. Anyone? And well, I was approached by um, a couple people about the Hill Street accident in Roscoe. So that, and mm -hmm. Okay, so so um, so yeah. Any considerations so to making any changes? I I I beat the street on that, and I went out and I looked, and I uh looked more and talked to chad over at roscoe with were you with me max or was 
Kevin Chan. Yeah. I, yeah, Max was with me. And the, the only resolution I see is uh, making, making Hill Street one way at the top. Hear me out on this. So all traffic, all through traffic would have to turn right on Roscoe Street. Mm -hmm. Leaving it both ways for traffic for households beyond and businesses beyond Roscoe Street. So once you're really steep coming down the hill, you're still not going to completely rule out someone losing their brakes. You can't really put Ballard's in the middle of the road. That was kind of an idea, but then you take 20 parking spots yeah. and mm -hmm. trucks, big trucks go through there. Uh, really, that's the only thing that I could see is blocking uh, the eastbound lane of Hill Street coming down the hill, but, mm -hmm. but allowing residents and businesses that are east of that barrier, east of Roscoe Street access both ways that I way it would a speed bump or a strip you know, stop strips of some type to slow them up instead of making it one way does anybody talk to i know larson's wanted to keep getting his building hit but you know drennan's just opened up a new mm -hmm. restaurant or tavern there uh medbury is is making that a one way going up is that going to impact their business at all it, it shouldn't that's what i i don't want to i mean killing someone could impact I understand business. that so I mean that's kind of to me I don't want to say yeah it happened and we're uh, the, the only thing I that's the only thing beyond vehicle inspection checkpoint at the top of that hill that we can do <laughs> I mean that's yeah. it's kind of because you don't want to affect business and you don't you know but you also want you know public safety so it's to me the the best so the mm -hmm. best solution that I can come up with and, and talking with Chad and Roscoe and Max, you know, the best thing would to be route traffic on Roscoe Street and keep it, you know, mm -hmm. it's still dangerous when you come down High Street, mm -hmm. if you don't have brakes and you're shooting out into a state route. So, I mean, either way, it's, it's what do you do? And you know, we stood out there and the sun was shining. It's kind of, it's weird that during the winter, we don't have these issues. It's like when it's nice out. So I'm really surprised that like how, you know, nothing bad has happened there during the winter, but there, I mean, there's really nothing that is going to catch a car or if, if you don't have brakes, rumble strips are just going to run when you go 100 miles an hour without brakes it's just going to rumble your car and you know there's no good i don't i mean we looked and and i don't that's the only thing that i could come up with but i do you know you think apple butter stirring when everyone's down at the bottom of that hill someone loses their brakes and you know that's not how we want to make the news so i don't that's the only recommendation I have. I just didn't want residents, you know, east of Roscoe Street on Hill Street mm -hmm. saying, you know, I can't, I can't go the other way. You know, I want to keep that open and available to them, but you're still, you're running a more minimal risk with less cars. And I think there's about 20, there's about 20 businesses and households uh, on the east side of that um, Hill Street. So that's, I mean, any suggestions anyone has, I'll, I'll take them. But I just, you know, it, to me, it's public safety. And I had the, I was out there. Actually, I was out there that day and the following day to try to figure something out. So, isn't the traffic routed anyway during the festival? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I mean, they routed. Yeah, they routed Roscoe. Well, they shut down mm -hmm. White Woman Street. Yeah. They eliminated right. all. You know, I would love, and I said, I would love to see if. if you know, if we had enough outside parking, it would be wonderful to have Roscoe not a through street and actually have the street open up where you can walk yeah. on the streets. And so, <clears throat> Roger, I seem to recall the last time that I don't know how many years ago that other bad crash, mm -hmm. we looked into speed bumps and so forth, and we didn't go with it because of the problems it causes for uh, plows. Well, mm -hmm. there's signs all the way up. Before you even start going down grade at, at Roscoe Cemetery, there's a 
There's a sign there, 15 mile an hour hill. There's a sign uh, on the other right at Roscoe <laughs> Chapel Lake. So I mean, and those were put up as a result of the last of the, right mm -hmm. of the fatal the fatal crash. Girl, the 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 but she had no brakes. That probably tells you signs aren't very effective. <laughs> Well, and that, and that's, no, and that's what I tell. I mean, it's if you have no, your brakes are not reading the sign. You know, yeah. If you don't, if you don't check, you, you can put a sign up for anything, but that doesn't mean that people are actually going to read the sign, or you know, things are going to play out the way it. It's kind of kind of like the thirty and fifteen minute parking signs downtown. They, so I suggest maybe whatever you decide. It, Fine, but maybe meet with the uh, Frosco Business Association if you haven't already. Actually, we, we have a meeting, I think, this week with Frosco. Get the so, feeling of the so business. I'll see what they, yeah, I'll see. And, and once again, you know, if you can't, if you're a resident out Hill Street, then that would be 55. If you're, if you're a resident out there, if you can't go through Rosco, come into town for work, when you get off work, you can go up the hill and go. You can go through Roscoe then. So it's not like we want it all shut off, and you know we want it blocked from civilization. Right. We just want it to mitigate the risk right. of, of fatalities. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody else? Max, he's pretty well covered everything that I can think of to talk about. <laughs> we'll try to get a. Yeah, the week schedule out, of course, it's very weather dependent um, by the end of the week. But we learned and picking them up with that new truck that we have. I can just drive around and see some pile leaves, sucks them up, takes one guy, which is pretty nice. So. Yeah, I had a chance to observe that for a while. It's very effective and very efficient. Thank COVID for that, Glenn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Property codes, Jeff, you have anything? Uh, just to let you know, we have eight commercial properties that we're getting ready to file charges on for failure to pay vacant, register and pay vacant property fees. Uh, we have some residentials we're going to do that on. The old Indianapolis Club factory, they've started demolition on it down on Fifth Street. Uh, and as we said, it looks like the uh, Chinese restaurant should be down soon. Uh, Edmont's property has big portion of that has been sold and people that have bought it are in contact with the same folks that are starting to work down at the glove factory because these people salvage the bricks and sell the bricks inner city where they're building build, renovating mm -hmm. old buildings and can't get matching bricks so they've been in contact so hopefully we can thrust that building down uh and uh just move forward on those things I got something for, for Jeff. I had a person uh, mention to me there's a Honda parked on beach. Any parking from is it in the street or on it's in the street? And they, they say it hasn't been moved they in need months. Contact the sheriff's office because until I get there, I can't of course any parking lot. All right. And there's a uh, also on between beach and Kenilworth in the alley, there's a car in a driveway on blocks. And they said it's been that way for a while. So I'd send you a couple of pictures. I told him I'd report it. I did. Good job, bro. Yeah. That's in the alley. Yes. It sounds like they need wheels, not death. <laughs> you got that. Right. <laughs> Anybody else have anything? Okay, we'll adjourn and uh, meet back up in the chambers.
excused Grove. Here. Johnson has to be excused Mitchell. Here. Moore. Here. Turner. Here. I need a motion to excuse Tom Blarcroft and Chad Johnson. I'll make that motion for the more. Clerk, please call the roll. Andrew? Yes. Clark uh, Gross? Yes. Mishler? Yes. Moore? Yes. Turner? Yes. We stand for pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing. Father, we thank again thank you for the opportunity to be here to uh, do the city's work. Uh, God and direct us each one of us tonight. We pray this in your name. Amen. Okay. Minutes, Council, your email the minutes from October 13th Council meeting. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Make a motion. Andrew made a motion. Second. Please call the roll. Andrew. Yes. Grove. Yes. Mishler. Yes. Moore. Yes. Turner. Yes. In public input. On. We have a request from the administration for an addition to the agenda. Ordinance 4621, which is appropriations. I need a motion to um, add the ordinance. So, Mishler, a motion. Okay. Sorry, seconded. Clerk, please call the roll. Andrew, yes. Grove, yes. Mishler, yes. Moore, yes. Turner, yes. Sustaining committee. Mary, you have anything you want to add from the committee meeting? Uh, actually, I've uh, this, uh, yeah, I got a fix this week. Pro progress cannot wait, right? Uh, I want to say I didn't mention actually me and Max, uh, and as well as a, our engineer, uh, met with some uh, builders last week. Pretty exciting meeting uh, on a couple potential uh, building sites within our 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 city. Of course, Roger, our city. Thank you. Um, all went well. Uh, just looking for some follow up on that. Uh, as well, I want to remind people trick or treat this Saturday, the 30th, from 5 to 6 30 p.m. I uh, want to urge drivers to look out for kids, not only on trick or treat, but every other day as well. And uh, also coming up quickly is Miracle on Main Street Parade. Uh, that will be Friday, November 19th. Uh, if you want to walk, you want to ride, you want to float, float like actually ride on a float, uh, you can register at Our Town Coshocton's brand new website, uh, ourtowncoshocton.org. Uh, check that website out. A little bit of uh, what's going on downtown, uh, as well as just downtown is, is hot, uh, a lot of growth, a lot of building. I want to thank the community. Uh, at some points it, it's exhausting, but it is uh, very, very good to see the things that we have going on within our community. And if you look on Facebook, there's a lot of doom and gloom, but I look at the whole picture and, and I see a lot of good people doing a lot of good things and just want to thank everyone for the for the work that's going on within our community. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Max, you have anything? I don't have anything to add from Mark. You picked everything from you. Okay. Yeah. Bob, you have anything for the all director? Uh, two things. First, uh, the meeting minutes should reflect that the mayor submitted the door application to city council for tonight's meeting. And second, I see in our law director's report if there's any questions. Thank you. Did you say he submitted it at tonight's meeting or is it? Uh, let's just do it at tonight's meeting. Okay.
Sherry, you have anything else for us? Uh, no. We went over many. Nothing else. Thank you. I'll go ahead and send out the um, the amended policy for the American Rescue Plan. And we have plenty of time, so let's just plan on accepting that at the August or November 9th. <laughs> August. Right. November 8th. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sheriff's report, Sheriff Crawford, you guys were emailed as uh, 12 hour shift assignments. Anybody have any questions for him? Sheriff, you have anything to add or anything? Nothing to add. Okay, thank you, Thank you. Hey, we didn't get a heat map correct. I've never gotten a text on the call list. It's the first meeting of the month. I wanted every meeting. <laughs> Let me see what I can do for you. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, you have anything to add? Oh, he loves it. I think he thought he emailed those before Sherry and uh, he emailed them. Yeah. So he emailed them. He decided to go there because he had an office that time as well. Okay. Yep. Mr. Tendron, you have anything to add? Nothing at this time. Good. Again, I think you're doing a great job. Appreciate your effort. Anybody else have anything? Not we'll go into board. Looks like you have anything. Yeah. Just put down the lead. Okay. <laughs> we'll go into legislation. Uh, first reading. I will ask the clerk to give the first reading of <clears throat> ordinance 44 21. An ordinance to amend the city of Coshocton codified ordinance title three utility chapters 933, 934. 935, 936, 937, 939, 943, 947, 943. Heard the first reading of 44-21. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Ordinance will run its course. Legislation at the first reading. I'll ask the clerk to give the first reading of ordinance 45-21. Transfers. Heard the first reading. Of ordinance 4521. Anybody have any questions or comments? Ordinance will take its course. Next ordinance at the first reading. I'll ask the clerk to give the first reading of ordinance 46 21. Appropriations. You've heard the first reading of 46 21. Are there any questions or comments? Ordinance will run its course. <coughs> No resolutions. Any old business? I believe so. No new business. Um, as I mentioned, and uh, for communications, I just as I mentioned, you know, I think on the um, on the streets on the outside to uh, lead into the outside of the city to the city limits, and more people would take an interest in cleaning those areas up. I know the Opportunity School does. Point of Vista that came uh, all the way to the water tower. And Max knows that's kind of a dangerous area, but you know, we had 20 kids out there and did a good job. Of, Thank you. Encourage, yeah, I'd encourage more people to pick on some of those streets and things you get out there. And I appreciate the, uh, the help. I know the city would as well. Clerk, are there any other communications? No. Okay, Clerk, when is the next date and time for our meeting? November the 8th at 7 p.m. Okay. You have a motion for the meeting to be adjourned? So moved. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Andrew? Yes. Roche? Yes. Mitchell? Yes. Moore? Yes. Turner? Yes. Meeting is adjourned. How are you doing? How are you doing? Outstanding. Um, I said for my guy, I have to clean the reference. Right. Last Friday.